Okay, hello everyone. Um, welcome to this webinar about mass trains in Ensemble. Um, my name is Erin Haskell and I'm one of the Ensemble Outreach Officers. And Ensemble is a project that's within the EBI, so um, you can find our previous training uh, webinars online through the EBI training portal as well. And you can contact us through Help Desk. Uh, our role is to answer your Help Desk queries and do presentations and webinars such as these. So today's webinar, we're briefly going to cover what Ensemble is and give you a brief introduction if you're um, not familiar. We'll look at the mass genome assemblies that we have in Ensemble and where this data comes from and the differences between these and the mass reference assembly. We're going to have a look at how you can use comparative genomics data in Ensemble to compare these uh, reference and mass strain assemblies. And we'll look a bit about variation data and how you can find this for um, specific uh, variants within Ensemble. And uh, we'll finish up with a browser demonstration. So um, the presentation will cover the background information and then the demonstration will uh, cover how you can actually find this in Ensemble. So just covering what Ensemble is, we're a genome browser. We import uh, already sequenced and assembled uh, genomes into uh, our database from publicly available uh, repositories. And then we run our own analyses pipelines on them and make them fit for browsing in our web uh, database and also uh, interacting with our APIs and so on. So we take these sequences and we add our own annotation. We have our own in-house uh, annotation pipelines from um, uh, to do automatic gene and transcript annotations. And for human and mouse as well, we also support um, regulatory feature annotations as well from um, uh, data that we import from other databases such as ENCODE. So we also think of ourselves as an added value resource where we bring together information from a wide range of other databases, many of them from the EBI as well, uh, and uh, condense these into our single site. So if you look for a gene or a location of interest in Ensemble, you will see not only our own annotations of genes, but also any other um, relevant databases. So you can find out information about where that gene is um, expressed, where the uh, what pathway that gene is involved in, as well as many other um, characteristics and literature citations and so on. So we ho really hope that we're becoming a resource which is a sort of one-stop shop for all of your um, uh, gene and uh, location needs for the genome browser. So just to summarize the kind of data that we have, we currently have genome assemblies available for uh, 99 species currently. We have many more genome assemblies uh, than this. Of course, we have the multiple strains for mouse and a few other species have more than one assembly present in Ensemble as well. Uh, so we are able to make gene trees from uh, gene alignments from these different species and so you can find out information about homologs and paralogs across the, all the species in Ensemble. Uh, I mentioned briefly we have the regulatory build for human and mouse. Um, Currently not available for other species due to lack of data, but we're building on this and a recent release brought a new regulatory build for mouse. So we now have data from 79 epigenomes available. We have variation displays and the variant effect predictor, which is probably our most popular tool. Um, so you can view known variants within uh, from a range of different sources, which differ for different species and see how common or rare they are, uh, which we're going to look up later, which we're going to look at again later today. Uh, we have Biomart, which enables you to um, create custom bulk data export queries. So you can download uh, the same information for a range of genes, find a bulk number of orthologs, for example, or variants. Um, so that's a really easy way to uh, point and click interface to download a bulk amount of data. And if you're more comfortable working in the command line, then we also have programmatic access via the APIs. Um, and the best thing about Ensemble, I think, is that we are completely open source. So we bring in together a lot of data from um, many different resources, all in one easy place, and anyone anywhere in the world can download and use that data uh, any way they see fit. So there are many ways to access the Ensemble data. Uh, the main browser is the best way to access this sort of on a one by one, uh, case by case basis. And that's what the demonstration is gonna cover today, just the main browser site. Uh, if you're looking at groups of data, I mentioned Biomart for uh, bulk download of uh, genes, variants, uh, specific locations. Uh, but we also have the REST API as well, which you can use in any programming language, which also then enable you to get similar data. And we have the VEP, which is obviously specific to variants, but enables you to query a list of your variants uh, quickly and um, give you consequence predictions for those as well. 
The Perl API and MySQL are um, probably the most powerful ways to query our database. Um, currently, the Perl API has more functionality than the REST API. But as many people don't know how to code in Perl, we're moving this across to the REST API. And hopefully, that makes it more accessible for a larger range of people. And if you're interested in downloading data from uh, the whole genome or whole chromosome level, we have the FTP site as well. So I just want to briefly mention our release cycle, as this is uh, a bit different and specific to Ensemble. So we recently had a new release last week for Ensemble 92. So uh, we've incorporated some new genome assemblies, run underlying software updates, and updated some gene sets, including for the mass reference. Uh, we run comparative genomics on all the new genes and genomes, and we update variation data and update regulation data. And as I mentioned, we have a new regulatory bill for mass from this release. And we also update any interfaces uh, as we do necessary. So I mentioned this just because sometimes you may visit Ensemble and you are working, uh, say you visited now, and then if you come back in three or four months, you may notice that the data has changed. So it's worth noting down which uh, version you're using, and we'll look at this in the demo. And then you can always revisit it through our archive sites if you um, find that the data has changed um, or you see more data, such as additional regulation data now. So let's move on to talk about uh, rodents in Ensemble. I said that we have uh, 99 species present. Uh, we currently have 24 rodent assemblies, so we're looking at about a quarter of all the species in Ensemble uh, are rodents. Uh, you can see highlighted here that we have all the mass strains uh, included here. So we have 15 house mass strains of the uh, species mus musculus, which is mostly what we're going to be focusing on today. And we have a range of other rodents, including rat and a few other um, mus genus species. Um, most of these were introduced in release 90, so really quite recently, just over a year ago. Um, looking specifically at Miranae genomes, so the subspecies, uh, subfamily of the Miridae, we have the mass reference genome, of course, which you can see highlighted in this uh, tree on the right. Uh, we have 15 mus musculus strains, as I said before, as well as these three um, other species within the mus genus and rat. Uh, these are what's included in the sort of Miranae. Uh, we're mostly going to be looking at these today, so just the mouse genomes of the house mouse strain, uh, house mouse species, and um, so we'll focus in on those now. These are the uh, mouse strains that we have in Ensemble. I'm not going to read them all out, um, but you can see them all here. And these we've imported from the Sanger Institute, uh, the mouse genomes project within that. Um, and this includes all these 15 different uh, mus muscular strains, as well as the mus spretus uh, species, the Algerian mouse. Um, and highlighted, I've got um, C57BL6NJ, which uh, we include as a strain, but is also the same species as the mouse reference genome. Um, oh, and I just wanted to highlight that there's a new paper out about this resource, um, which details the um, reference genomes and haplotypes and novel functional loci. So you can find this currently on BioArchive. Bio and my colleague Emily has posted the link to this within the um, chat box here, so you can uh, just click through to the link if you want to read that later. Um, so I mentioned this mass strain C57BL6NJ is the same as the mass reference, so we commonly get the question, what's the actual difference? So while these are the same strain, they are different mice, so the genetic material that came for sequencing these assemblies came from different individuals. Uh, the methods for sequencing these were different as well. So mass reference was the second um, sequence mammalian genome, which came up some time ago, whereas the mass strains are a more recent resource, so use different sequencing methods appropriate for the time. Uh, they also have different gene annotation pipelines uh, within Ensemble, uh, which I'll go into more detail about over the next few slides. And broadly speaking, there's less data for the strain level assembly. So we're going to talk now just about the gene annotation uh, differences between mouse and the mouse strains. So um, the mouse reference genome has what we call the GenCode gene set, which we updated in the last release. Uh, this is a combination of the Ensemble um, automatic computational annotation that we run in-house, as well as the Havana manual gene annotation, which is um, the Havana project is a group of curators that manually review um, gene annotations and look at a broad range of data to inform inform uh, reliable uh, gene predictions and annotations for sometimes quite difficult to annotate genes. Uh, the mass reference also has a consensus coding sequence, or CCDS, which I'll discuss in the next slide. Um, we have the Ensemble regulatory build available for the mass reference as well, uh, which again we updated in the last release. So this will, uh, we're able to provide annotations, for example, on um, where enhancers, promoters, 
open chromatin regions and a number of other uh, epigenetic features occur within the mouse genome. And uh, we also have variation data for this uh, assembly as well in ensemble. So I mentioned that the Genco gene set is made up of these uh, automatically and manually annotated genes, as well as the merged gene set. And this is the default gene set that's used by ENCODE. Um, put a thousand genomes in here, but obviously that's not relevant to mouse. Um, but other major projects also make use of this Genco gene set. And this is uh, currently only available for human and, and mouse. The consensus coding DNA sequencer, or CCDS, is an attempt uh, for us and uh, other resources to come up with some uh, consensus an gene annotations. Um, so often we run our own different pipelines, particularly between the NCBI, RefSeq, and Ensemble, and sometimes this results in different gene annotations. So the CCDS is uh, a collaboration between the EBI, um, MGI is the Mass Genomes Initiative, HGNC is human specific, and the NCBI, um, just to uh, address the needs of the research community to provide a consensus gene annotation, at least at the protein coding um, level. So talking about the mass strains now, uh, the gene annotation was not carry out, carried out directly by us at Ensemble, unlike most of the other species that we have on the Ensemble main site, but rather by the mass genomes project who supplied these uh, uh, genome assemblies to us. So they were able to infer genes from homology to the mouse reference using version M8 at the time. So this is essentially mapping transcripts from the mouse reference genome to the um, aligned uh, genomes of these strains, and then uh, being able to refine these by using um, strain-specific RNA-seq data. Uh, we did run some additional analyses, mostly protein alignments and RNA predictions in-house. So uh, we've been able to build slightly on what we were provided with. Um, but broadly, the gene annotation comes from the Mass Genomes Project. So just to summarise, the Mass reference has um, manual and automatic gene annotation, um, regulation data, also CRISPR data and variation data. Uh, both Mass strains and Mass reference have um, automatic gene annotation to some level. Uh, population frequency data comes from the mass strains for the variant data in the mass reference and comparative genomics, although these do differ slightly, which is what the rest of the presentation is going to be on. Um, so yes, and the mass strains, as I said, annotation by the Mass Genomes Project directly. So we'll have a look now at the comparative genomics and how these, um, how you can use these in comparing the mass and mass strain. So comparative genomics allows us to understand evolution, differences between species or strains at the genome level, which is what I assume most people would be interested in, uh, deciding gene function based on homology, which is very useful in gene annotation, and distribution of highly conserved regions. So in Ensemble, we broadly split these into gene-based and sequence-based resources, uh, the former found in the gene tab and the latter in the location tab. Uh, the gene-based resources focus mostly around phylogenetic trees, so we are able to align um, gene translations for protein trees and uh, be able to use these to determine homology, so looking at orthologs and paralogs. Uh, Sequence-based resources uh, focus around uh, larger scale alignments, so rather than at the gene level, we're looking at whole genome alignments here, um, and these are able to help us understand ancestral sequences, the age of base and synteny information. So looking first at homology, just to define this briefly, we have uh, the term homologue is specific sequences that are descended from the same common sequence as an ancestor. Paralogues are those which have evolved by duplication, and these can be within and between species, which are um, essentially mean whether duplication has occurred before the species have diverged or after the species have diverged um, to generate these two different types. And orthologues, which are those that are derived from a common ancestor through speciation. So as an example, this uh, gene, di gene tree diagram, um, HSAP refers to homo sapiens or humans, and MS is the mass uh, example. So in this top example, we have an example of a one-to-one -one orthologue where speciation has happened um, uh, just, and, and that's the result of uh, the two genes and they've diverged naturally. Uh, in the middle case, we have uh, many-to-many orthologues where we've had a speciation event where human and mouse have become diverged, but the gene has since duplicated in both species, and then one to many orthologs are where we have um, duplication after um, speciation in one species, but not in both. So obviously this is not 
particularly relevant uh, if you're looking at interest species variation between um, uh, mass strains, but we do still represent these in the same way in ensemble, which is why I highlighted. So the speciation nodes will still be present um, within the species, uh, within the gene trees, which are strain specific, but just to say that this is uh, indicating that the different strains have got um, homology between them. So moving on to whole genome alignments, these are uh, used to identify highly conserved regions and sequences that evolve slowly or are likely to be functional and work for both non-coding and co coding sequences. So rather than just looking at gene level, we can look at intergenic regions um, and so on. Uh, it's also useful for troubling, uh, spotting troubling gene predictions and defining syntonic regions. And there are two types, pairwise and multiple. So pairwise alignments, we use a um, pipeline called LASC. And these are typically very high coverage alignments. They're just between two species or two assemblies. Um, and they're typically only between genomes which have whole chromosome level assemblies rather than at the scaffold level. Um, mass strains, unlike the mass reference genome, have only got pairwise alignments with other Mirinae assemblies. So this includes all the mass strains, um, the mass reference, and rat and Algerian mouse. Uh, so it's not possible to compare these uh, to human, for example. So to do so, you would have to use the mouse reference genome and then compare back to see whether there are any differences at this level. Uh, so for the mouse reference genome as well, we have multiple alignments. So these are groups of uh, different species and assemblies, uh, which you can do bulk comparisons to. So in the first instance, we have the 18 Mirinae, which again, as I said, includes the mouse strains, reference, Algerian mouse and rat. Uh, we have 26 Ethereum mammals, which is through the EPO pipeline, which you may see referred to in ensemble. This includes primates and mammals with high quality chromosome level assemblies, so including human in this case. Uh, uh, 32 amniota vertebrates is similar to the above, but includes lizards and birds. And then the 70 Ethereum mammals is a, a broader category again and includes those which don't have chromosome level assemblies, so those are the scaffold level, but excluding fish. Uh, for the mouse strains, again, this is slightly different. So we have the ability to compare between the Mirinae, but uh, this is specific just to um, the, the strains. You can do pairwise and multiple alignments within um, this group. So we'll have a look now at variants across the mouse strains and how you can explore these in ensemble. So if you're looking at variants in a mouse strain, you might be interested in finding out whether this variant is found in other strains, whether there are any other alternate alleles at this location, and whether this variant is potentially rare or specific to your mouse strain that you're looking at. So mouse strains have no assembly-specific variation data, but alleles can be found in the population section, uh, population genetic section for mouse reference assembly, and I'll show you how to find this in the demo. Um, so mouse is able to, um, sorry, the mouse reference genome assembly has variation data imported from these sources. So dbSNP is the main one. You can see we have 84 million uh, short variants from this database. Um, we have DGBA, which uh, supports the structural variant data that we have. And the other two, IMPC and MGI, are mouse specific. And these contain also phen phenotypic data, which is indicated by these little eye symbols um, in the table below. Uh, we're able to predict variant consequences across the whole genome, so aligning these variants to our gene predictions that we have in Ensemble. So we can look at this within the context of genes, whether it falls in a coding or non-coding region. So we can see, we can sometimes have synonymous changes where there's no change in amino acid, or um, non-synonymous or missense changes, which results in change of the amino acid and therefore protein product. Um, we're also able to make predictions about um, intergenic regions and regulatory features and so on. Um, for mouse as well, we're able to predict the consequences of certain missense variants, so where they do change the amino acid. We have SIFT scores, so sorting intolerant from tolerant, and this is a, a prediction that ranges from zero to one, which considers how conserved the amino acid is and what the actual chemical change in the amino acid is that may have a consequence on protein function. So looking at whether uh, the resulting change may affect the way that the protein folds, for example. So you'll be able to see this data in Ensemble, and uh, if you're, um, the variant that you're looking at is predicted to be tolerated or deleterious, and whether that occurs in different mouse strains as well. So this is an example uh, variant summary page. So we can see that we have this um, ID at the top, RS 
three through four and so on um, from dbSNP and the consequence being an intron variant. Below this we can see the alleles listed as G slash A and I just mentioned this because these are always going to be reported with regards to the mouse reference genome so whatever the location on the mouse reference genome this allele G is going to be present even if it's not the most common allele within your strain uh, so it's worth checking which one whether this matches your strain or not. Um, variants with this sort of pie chart symbol have population frequency data from the mass strains data sets, so you'll be able to see um, which variants um, have this data. Unfortunately, not all of them do currently, but um, this symbol will enable you to find those that do. Okay, and so we have, um, when you do find a variant that has this data, you can see the, how common the different alleles are. So in this case, we have a G, which is the reference allele present in 67% of cases. And then this table below will break down how common and what different types of genotypes are present across the different mass strains. Um, so you have the option to click show, and then this additional table will come up, which shows you, based on each different strain, what the genotype is at this location for this variant. Okay, we also have some additional data. So in this example, we have PelGen MM Panel 2 project, um, which has information about different strains, as well as some that are uh, common with the Mass Genomes project. Um, note that we don't have these assemblies and ensemble, but we are able to show you some data about these uh, within context of variants and the genotype and allele frequencies. Okay, so that concludes the short presentation. Uh, we're going to jump out of this now and have a look at um, how to find out information about the different mouse strains and genome assemblies. Um, looking at how to find orthologs of this particular gene, H60C, um, across the mouse strains and find out uh, variant genotypes across the strains for a variant that falls within this gene. So I'm just going to pop out of the presentation now. And I'm going to go across and find my Google Chrome. Okay, so we're on ensemble.org at the moment, so if you want to follow along, feel free to um, do so. Uh, I've come to the home page of Ensemble. We have this header at the top, um, which has quick links to certain tools, the VEP, for example, as well as help and documentation, which you may find useful. Um, on the right hand side here, we have information about the release. So you can see the highlights of the release. Usually, uh, mouse is quite high at the top because it's the second most. Um, um, common species that people, most popular species in Ensemble. So you can see here we've highlighted the new regulatory build and Genco gene set for mouse, and also other news from our blog. So if you want to learn more about what's changed in this release, then uh, our blog is the place to go. And as I said, it's maybe worth noting down what release you're working in when you come to Ensemble. I'm gonna just scroll down the page a bit now. Um, this is the main search box in Ensemble where you can search for genes or um, phenotypes and variants. Um, and here we have our favorite genomes listed. So we have the mouse uh, reference genome assembly here. Um, but I'm going to click instead on here where I can view the full list of ensemble species. Okay. So now we come to a table which um, lists all of the species in ensemble um, alphabetically by common name. I'm just going to zoom out a bit so it goes a bit more normal. Um, so here I'm going to just search, use the search box rather than scrolling down for mus musculus so I can find all of the house mouse. Um, genome assemblies and you can see they're all listed here with mouse at the top the one without any strain specific information is the reference genome you can see here that we've got um, annotated as the full gene build which refers to the ensemble annotation and lists that we have the variation and regulation databases for this species and if you scroll down you can see we have all of these different assemblies present here and um, their particular strains are uh, listed here as well as the assembly version. So we're all on version one for this example. And you can see we have external annotation import for these species. If I just click on this top one here, we'll come to this page, which um, is within the mouse page because these are all mouse strains of the, the um, within the mouse, uh, house mouse species. Sorry. Um, so we have a bit more information here about the assembly and annotation and comments on the comparative analysis that you're able to do with these species. Um, scrolling down, you can see we have all of them listed here. Uh, you can click to view an example location, location and look at the carrier type, for example, and also find some more information out about the um, strains within Ensemble. Um, and 
So I'm now going to click on this um, link at the top here, mouse, to go to the mouse homepage. Uh, you can see here we have examples of all the different types of data that you can find for the species. So we have the um, genome assembly. If you click here, you can see all of the information about species, as well as the annotation, comparative genomics, variation and regulation sections as well. You can quickly click on any of these links to see any examples for this. Um, but I'm going to come up to the top here and search for my gene of interest H60A and click go. So you can see I've come from the mouse homepage, so it's only searched within mouse for me. Oh, perhaps that was not what I was meant to search for. H60C, sorry, my problem. Okay, let's try again. Sorry about that. Okay, that looks better. So you can see we're searching only in mouse, um, and we have options down the side here to filter by feature type, but you can also say we can restrict and search for this gene within particular strains, and if I expand this, we get the full list of where this gene is available underneath this name. So you can quickly search within your uh, strain of interest. I'm going to actually just click on the house, um, the, the reference gene. Okay, so now we come to the summary page. You can see we're in the gene tab um, for H60C. And uh, I can click here to show the transcript table. And here we can see that we've got three transcripts for this gene. Um, two of them are protein coding, and here you can see that we have the CCDS, which I spoke about in the presentation, and also the GenCode basic flag here. If we scroll down even further, we'll be able to see a visualization of this gene in a genome browser context alongside the regulatory build here. So we can see these unfilled boxes uh, represent non-coding exons, while filled boxes are coding exons, and the lines in between refer to the introns. This. So I'm going to start off by looking at comparative genomics. If we look over on this left-hand navigation panel, we can see we have the header comparative genomics um, and many options to see author logs and gene trees. And then at the bottom, we have this option which says strain. So if we expand this, we can see that we have a number of options. Um, and this is specific to mouse, so you can just see um, strain-related information here. Um, so if we click on gene tree, we come to this image here. So I scroll down. We have a section at the top here which refers to how many genes are within this gene tree and different types of nodes in this gene tree. And we have the main section here, which is the gene tree itself, as well as the protein alignments on the right hand side and the legend at the bottom. So currently some nodes are collapsed as indicated by these funnels. I'm going to actually use just a quick link at the bottom to view the fully expanded tree rather than clicking to expand them all individually. So our gene of interest, H60C, is highlighted from the mouse reference genome. You can see that we have um, uh, two other strains that are quite closely um, uh, represented here next to the mouse reference genome. And if we look at the alignments on the side, we can see that those are quite similar. There are other strains which have um, different alignments. So some of them are missing this block at the end here. Um, and you can see represented by these red blocks that we have duplication nodes as well. So we can actually see at the top here, we have this H60B highlighted in blue, and that indicates that this is a power log of uh, the H60C gene. So previously before, um, there's been a duplication of this gene, and then since then, they've diverged and become um, separated. And as I said in the presentation, these blue nodes represent speciation nodes, but evidently these species are, um, these assemblies are all the same species, but that's how we choose to represent them. So we can see that there are some differences between um, of this gene between these different strains. So if I click on this link to the side here for orthologs, we can look at this in a bit more detail. So this is looking again just at the um, mass strains. So we include mass, um, the Algerian mass within this, um, but the rest are all the uh, mass strains. And then at the bottom we have a uh, rat as well, which is represented twice due to the duplication that occurred in this species. So we have these different scores, um, the target ID and query ID, and um, these refer to uh, the percentage of orthologous sequence which matches the mouse sequence, and um, the percentage of mouse sequence matching the sequence of the ortholog. So these are just measures to um, say how similar they are. The shorter the um, gene in the ortholog, the lower this number. And this is just because in longer um, protein sections, uh, 
if you have a long sequence for one species and a short sequence for other, then the shorter sequence is more likely to align fully with the longer sequence, but the converse is not true. So that's what these scores refer to. And we have the um, GOC scores, gene order of conservation scores. So you can see these are all 50, which indicates there may be some um, differences between these mass strains. So you can click on these links here to view sequence alignments between um, uh, your gene of interest and the author log. And you can do this for protein alignment or cDNA, um, cDNA alignment as well. So these will show you the alignment of these genes between the two species uh, in cluster W format. So we have ENSP is going to be the reference mouse um, protein identifier. And below we have the protein identifier for the um, AJ strain in this case. Um, and you can see the stars where they're missing is where there's a, a difference in the alignment. If we scroll down, we can see that um, the um, strain version has truncated at an earlier point. Uh, the paralog table is quite similar, so I'm going to skip that now for the interest of um, keeping to time. Um, so if I minimise this, and um, I'm going to click on the location tab now to so see how we can look at whole genome alignment data. Okay, so now we're in the location tab. We automatically go to the region in detail page, which is comprised of these three different images. So at the top, we have the chromosome level, which this red box identifies where we are located. And if we scroll down, we have a slightly more detailed uh, image where we can see different gene models and the regulatory build again, and this red box again highlighting where we are exactly. And H60C is highlighted in green because we came from the gene tab for this gene. And if we scroll down again, we see this gene centered on this image um, in the more detailed view where we can now start to see variant information, for example. I'm just going to scroll up and go to the navigation panel you see here on the side we have again another comparative genomic section in this case it's not separated out into um, strain and other comparative genomics but rather it's just um, compiled for all so i'm going to click on region comparison here and again we have a similar display to what we did in the other um, region in detail view but we collapsed our gene into just a single transcript for the purposes of comparing between genes in this case. So compared to what we saw in the gene page, with looking at um, comparisons at the location tab enables you to look at a broader range surrounding a certain gene. So perhaps you have a location of interest with a number of genes within it, and you might want to compare how conserved this is across your strains. So this is where you would come to the location page rather than the gene page, just to look for orthologs, for example. So if I click on the start blue button here, which says select species or regions, I get a little pop-up. And here I can choose to align um, with any of the species present in Ensemble, which have alignment data, uh, pairwise alignment data with mass. So for example, humans, we can look here to find sort of dog and ferret, for example. Obviously, we're looking mostly at rodents today, so I'm going to click here. And then I'm going to click on rats and mice as well. Note that you can quickly search for your species or strain of interest by typing at the top here. So here we have all the options of different alignments we can do. I'm going to click on um, CBA and NZO, as I remember that these were um, slightly different compared to the reference from the gene tab. Um, note that you can click and compare all of these different strains um, all at once if you're interested. Um, but I'm just going to show you a select few to keep it simple. So I click apply, and then hopefully this will reload. You can see in this chromosome level, I've got the um, chromosome uh, representations from the two strains. And again, we've got this uh, image representing the two strains down here. So if you hover over these images, it'll tell you which one is which. So this is the NZO HILT TJ um, assembly and the CBA J uh, assembly of, of that strain. So you can see there are some differences already in the number of genes that we have in this location. So we have um, H60C, uh, represented in all of these, highlighted by the red box, but then the genes around um, surrounding this region are slightly different for the different species. Okay. If we scroll down again, we get to this more detailed image. And what this is showing us is um, the mouse reference genome in the center, highlighted in red, and then the other two mouse references, um, strain assemblies above and below. So we have the NZO and the uh, CBA. And these pink regions uh, indicate where the sections are actually aligned to. 
and they're linked up with these green sections here so you can see which of these regions aligns to which part of um, in the other assembly. So you can see that there are some differences here particularly in the gene models and um, we're missing an exon for example within the um, CBA assembly and you can again scroll across if you're interested in looking a bit upstream or downstream and using the um, zooming uh, options here to view larger regions or regions in more detail. If you click on the um, pink sections you'll be able to see a link to actually see where that um, location maps to within that particular strain that it's linked to so that can offer some more information as well. Uh, so this is very handy if you're looking just wanting a visual representation of whether your genes align or whether there are any differences between them within species um, but maybe you want to be able to download this data as a text file as well so if I scroll up we can go to this alignments text region and again we have the option to select an alignment here so I'm going to click on this and we have the option now to do multiple or pairwise so I'm going to select multiple and I'm just going to do all of the Mirinae um, this cactus refers to the type of alignment that we have, so EPA and Mercatopactin pecan are just uh, different um, comparative genomics pipelines. I hope this won't take too long. <laughs> There we go. So what we have here is a representation of all the blocks that are aligned between these species. So um, ordered by length. So I'm going to click on this first block. Naturally, if there are many blocks uh, with gaps between them, then downloading an alignment for these is going to be a bit problematic. So we split it into these blocks. So we can see that the wrapped genome from the 18 that we uh, have selected doesn't have any alignment and again if we click on this block option we should be able to see the text yeah so what we are presented with here is an alignment um, uh, similar to the gene tree that we saw in ensemble um, sorry in the gene tab sorry um, and links to these uh, locations on across the different species and then at the bottom we have this whole genome um, alignment section for all of the different species you can display the full alignment. I won't do so now because that might uh, be quite a large and we'll be waiting for a long time for that to load. But you notice we have this option here to download alignment at the top. So if you click on that, you can see that you can download this alignment as a cluster W format, uh, as a pure faster file or as a um, in a number of different uh, formats for whatever you may find useful. And you can quickly preview these data to make sure that you've got the right kind of format um, available before you download. So in the case of FASTA, you'll just be downloading that region um, for each independent um, strain in Ensemble. Okay. I'll click to close this. Um, I think I'm going to leave it there now for comparative genomics and move on to the variation data. So you can see we have a section for variation um, within this uh, location tab. So actually, if I click on this variant table, what we see is a list of all of the variants within this location um, at these positions at the top highlighted here and you can change this quickly um, and we can see we have a number of intron variants and oh I'm sorry I've clicked on the wrong section and um, so we're in the variant table so you can see all the variants listed here and some of these have pie charts so we know that some variants within this um, location have uh, genotype frequency data from the mouse strains and if I actually click on the right table which is the strain table here sorry about that um, again we're in the same location so we've come to the strain table page and if we scroll down we've got these variants listed by ID here and if we scroll across we have the whole of the um, 15 different strains available in Ensemble and where they differ the alternate allele is highlighted here so we can see that um, for this particular variant, many of the strains have a G at this location, but actually the reference um, has an A. So we can click on one of these, we click on this one, for example. We can see how this looks within the variation tab. So note that we've popped from the location tab into the variant tab here, and we have this ID uh, consequence type. Again, if you're not sure of what it means, you can hover over for further predictions and the alleles. So we have reference and alternate alleles as well as the minor allele frequency as predicted by the genotype frequency data. 
So we have a C at this location on the reference genome and the alternate allele that's been identified as this T. Scroll down, we can find uh, quick links to looking at population genetics, which I'm going to click on now. And this is where we're going to begin to see the different genotype um, data. So we have the Mass Genomes Project, which is our 15 um, strains within Ensemble. So we click on this. You can see all the different uh, genotypes uh, listed by strains. So you can see many of them uh, have Ts and many of them have Cs at this location, but all of them are homozygous. Um, for these alleles. And if we uh, click to show this, this is an additional data set for slightly different um, uh, strains available um, from this particular uh, project, so ABI Crohn's Mass. So that just offers a little more information, but these are not the same uh, genome assemblies that we have available in Ensemble, although you may note that some of them do match the um, uh, strains that we do have available from the above section. So I'm going to hop back into my um, presentation now and wrap up, and then we'll come to any questions that people may have at the end, if there's anything that you'd like me to go through as well. So, okay, so um, evidently you probably found out about this course and registered through the EBI Train Online uh, section. So there are many other courses available there. Many are coming up for other resources as well as for Ensemble. So it's worth checking these out and seeing if anything is relevant to you. Uh, this video will be uploaded to YouTube and we have many other help and documentation videos available there for demos of how to access certain data in Ensemble. And if you have any problems, you can always email us at helpdesk, um, not only problems, but suggestions or just generic questions about data or anything you need to do in Ensemble. Uh, you can keep in touch as well through our Facebook page, our Twitter accounts, and our WordPress account on symbol.info is where you'll find all of the release specific news as well as um, additional tutorials and um, interesting things that we're up to at Ensemble. Um, so publications, we have an annual publication. So if you do use any data from Ensemble, we'd really appreciate it if you could cite us. Um, and also I've included the link here to the um, preprint paper from the Mass Genomes Project at the Sanger Institute, so you can find that here as well. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about Ensemble or having uh, more of an introduction to variation data, um, different resources and regulation data, for example, you can host a whole day or half day workshop. Uh, we'll travel pretty much anywhere in the world and we don't charge speaker fees, but we do ask you to cover um, travel and accommodation. Although we do currently have a grant um, for low to middle income countries. So if you are studying or researching in one of these, um, any of these countries, we'll happily come to you and deliver a um, essentially free ensemble workshop where we don't charge you um, speaker, fee speaker fees, travel and accommodation either. Okay, and then that I'd like to thank our ensemble team. This is our most recent retreat. So we're quite a large group now and we're constantly growing. And uh, this is just a list of everybody who's been involved in the main ensemble project, um, as well as our funders who are very grateful to and enable us to share all of this data completely free of charge um, to anyone anywhere in the world. And uh, you can see a full list of upcoming webinars at this link here. And please don't forget to fill in the survey that's going to launch um, after we conclude this webinar. Um, so I'll just uh, stick around for a little while if you want to ask any questions. I'll mute my microphone for now, um, but I can pop back on and answer any directly and show you anything in the browser as well if you're interested in seeing that. Okay, okay. so we've had a, a question about structural variants, um, so I'm just going to pop back into the browser and show you how you can find data out about those. So if I just swipe across here um, into the browser. So if you're ever looking for examples of different types of data in Ensemble, if you go to the home page of the species you're interested in, um, these are quick links to see examples. So if we click on this example of structural variant one here. Um, as I said, this comes from the DGVA, which is a different data set from uh, dbSNP where most of our variant data comes from. You can see that indicated in this source here. Um, we can see what strain this has come from. So it doesn't always necessarily come from the mass reference strain. So in this case, this structural variant comes from um, this very long uh, strain ID, which I'm not going to read out. Um, so you can still find out information. It's represented in a similar way to, um, to SNPs in Ensemble, but uh, we don't have genotype uh, data about this because obviously it's quite usually quite a large um, 
uh, variant. If we click to um, click on this genomic context link here from the variant tab, you'll be able to see what it looks like in context of the um, uh, of the genomic region. So you can see here it says genomic size is um, over nearly 3,000 base pairs in length. So we can see this is represented here as a larger variant. Um, so our gene in this case XKR4 um, is overlapping with this. And if you click on the variant again, you can see a bit further information about where this data has come from alongside any smaller variants. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. We have sequence SNPs as well. So you can find the data out certainly in Ensemble. It's a very similar method to get to this page as it is from the variant page. They'll come up in any gene um, variant tables if there are any structural variants uh, within the structural variant table. Um, so they do, but unfortunately, we don't have strain specific data about these except for the strain that it comes from. OK, and just to address the other question, which is about uh, the projected upload of additional pending mouse strains, uh, we don't have any plans at present to incorporate any other mouse strains into Ensemble, but the way that we've uh, carried out the alignments uh, means that we, with this progressive cactus method, means that we can easily add new strain assemblies um, to the database. So if you know of any um, already assembled um, and publicly available on, on repositories such as the ENA um, assemblies for these strains, then we will be able to incorporate them uh, hopefully into Ensemble. So if you just drop us an email um, if you know about any of these, then that would be great. Okay, so um, there's no further questions on the chat, so I think we'll wrap it up there. Um, as I said before, you can always email help desk if you've got any additional questions or you think of something after the webinar. So um, thanks for attending and I hope you all found it useful. Um, and good luck working with Ensemble. <laughs>